everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. As always, all of today's stories will be in the description down below for you to bounce around or whatever story you want to hear about. But let's talk about our first story though. The big roster moves out there. The big question as of right now, will Navi be saved with their newest member being from Flipside, their, their star player over the past year or so? He was with them for just over a year. That is of course Electronic. Finally leaving that jail cell to join Navi, their new lineup on screen for all of you. But again, the big question is, will the star power be enough to actually save their team? They've also sent Seize, who is on currently on their bench. He put himself there. He's now on loan, actually on a time trial with them, uh, that being Flipside. So we'll see how he does over there. Flipside, probably deterring power as of right now, losing their star player, being replaced by Seas. It was kind of a deduced uh, IGL over the past few months as well. I'm not sure a very good trade here for them. Of course, they probably got paid a good amount for Electronic. But the new Navi lineup, again, surrounding questions about them is, will this star power be enough? We've seen over the past year or so, Navi has not had very many substantial events, especially sequential substantial events. What I mean by that is, of course, we had ESL New York. They took down Virtus Pro in that best of three series. That was way back in, I think it was actually last year. Uh, I believe it was right around October this time last year as well. But besides that, they had a six month gap before their previous win uh, against uh, other other big teams out there. And alongside that, uh, ever since then, we haven't seen anything from them in the year of 2017 so far. And of course, even more, a big question is what is, happens to these star players when they actually join the Navi lineup itself? We've had several instances where players actually join Navi and are deduced members. We also have had several instances of players leaving Navi and doing, actually showing their great power. We had Guardian go to phase. He's doing quite well there. And of course, another key experiment here was Zeus. He actually left Navi to go back to Gambit. He led them to very, very, you know, a great potential and a great, obviously, leading that team to a major title as well. And then going back to Navi afterwards, and it, what we've seen so far has been relatively nothing. So it's going to be the big question so far in the future is will these players be able to actually, you know, emanate that star power they actually have? It's still a great lineup, a very powerful and experienced lineup, but can they actually put that to use? We will see with Electronic. Will this be the turning key in this solution? Solution. They're a very young team, very experienced though on top of that, so we'll see if they have enough power to go through and actually qualify for the major on top of that. And also some very funny news, I don't understand why these uh, why these figures out there challenge big reporters like Richard Lewis, but we actually have Eisen, the former owner actually of Moyer Invictus. You guys remember that whole situation where he was talking bad to ESCA reps, also threatening players to not stream their matches against them, uh, hence that organization was actually kicked from ESCA Mountain Dew League. Their players can still play, but this owner was actually has removed himself from that team itself, and alongside that he was is also the owner of CSGO Matches or a partial owner of that and he got into a conflict with Richard Lewis. So if you guys don't know the background of that, I briefly tried to explain it to all of you. Now Eisen is actually trying to argue with Richard Lewis against him. Uh, he's actually calling him a fake news source. So kind of some, some buddy heads here going on. If you guys want to check out Richard Lewis's response videos to that, I'll link those down below. But here is Eisen, the former owner or actually a partial owner of both CSGO Matches and Moyer Invictus. And here's his starting argument against Richard Lewis. And I'll link the full video down below if you guys want to watch it. There's a heck of a, dis a ton of dislikes on this comment. Content, but here's what he had to say, um, or or vape. All right. So I get home, take a shower, and I'm moving my thing over here. And I have to uh, listen to this fat fuck Richard Lewis uh, start talking shit about some stuff. And I, I knew this was going to be coming. Uh, especially after last night when we just went full troll mode on the Twitter. And also, I'm very thankful for you guys watching right now. Please do me a favor and leave a comment down below. I'm going to try to actually reply to all of you guys' comments today. If you guys want to leave a good comment for me to reply to, please leave a question for me, whatever questions you guys have about CSGO gameplay, myself, my own personal life. Leave a comment down below. But I want to thank you guys for watching because of the great last week we had. I do have sponsorship offers on the table. The first one, though, is from dreamteam.gg. So it's a great new platform out there. I know a lot of you guys are actually currently playing CSGO, maybe trying to go pro, or at least trying to get a lot better and actually find a team of players around the world. But it's a really big struggle for all of us guys like me who are loners sitting around in our room and actually can't find players to actually play with. So if you guys want to actually build your own dream team and manage your entire team on one platform, please check out the channel or the actual website down below. It's called dreamteam.gg. They're trying to develop a brand new platform for out there for all players of all kinds of all countries to actually go and find specific players of, of specific roles out there. So if you want to fill your team with a sniper or a rifler, an entry or a fragger, whatever you guys want to do, you actually build the whole team on the website down below. If you guys want to do me a favor, please click the link and actually just check it out. If you guys have any flaws or any corrections you want to make about the website or offerings up to them, I'm sure to read the comments in the video as well. So a huge thank you to all of you guys who click on that link. They do actually track that stuff and it could be a long-term sponsorship for this channel to keep it alive, but I'm going to keep on posting content no matter what. So as always, let's move on to our next story, guys, and it's actually a big one. As many of you know, Team Binary Dragons, actually a growing CSGO team in the rankings on HLTV this past month or so, have allegedly, as of right now, potentially scammed 
CS about money, a popular trading website or upgrading website out there right now. They've actually potentially scammed them out of $3,500 in skins. I'll link all the correct stuff down below for you guys to look into this, and we're going to see how this progresses in the future. CS.Money actually posted stuff like this on their Facebook page, and apparently uh, Binary Dragon does not keep up on their end of actually promoting CS.Money. If you check out their Twitter, they've had several posts about go check out CS.Money. Obviously, that Twitter very inactive ever since September, so maybe they didn't actually live up to the, the correct advertisement schedule that they actually needed to actually earn those skins. So apparently $3,500 from CS Money was actually transferred to the players of that Binary Dragon squad, and they're apparently not going to give those skins back. So we'll see the actual progression of this actual story works out, guys. And if it actually is a scam here, I really it looks very bad for an organization. I hope Binary Dragons is not actually scamming these guys, and maybe they can work something out. On top of that, though, some other important roster changes out there. For all you Brazilian fans, Immortals actually have confirmed their full-time roster, and this actually confirms a lot of things for the future of us. They've actually confirmed their new member, SHZ, who will be replacing Bolts on that roster. And this, of course, is actually very big because it kind of confirms everything for the future of 2018 for the SK Gaming roster. Of course, Immortals going forward, that will be their roster. A very, I don't know, I, I just don't appreciate the roster as of right now. They really have to prove themselves to me, and I feel bad for a top-tier player like Steel to stick around with those guys who are kind of a lower level in the Brazilian scene. If you guys disagree with me, I, I really do think players like ZQK have not proved anything to me, and so that roster has kind of degraded itself, and Steel is now stuck with that roster. Now, of course, we've also had uh, SK Gaming confirm for WESG, they actually will be sticking out with Phelps on that roster, but afterwards, I think it will be, of course, many of you guys are aware of this, Bolts on that roster permanently. After winning Epicenter, this is kind of a, a very, very jolting roster as of right now, winning their first tournament together, and so we're expecting Bolts to retain that 2018 spot and throughout uh, probably throughout the rest of the year as well, and Phelps will probably go to the bench, if not join the Cleveland Cavaliers and the trio going there sometime soon, allegedly. So a lot of big moves in Brazilian scene going on right now, guys. We'll see what happens. On top of that, though, for our last story, I want to talk about journalism in CSGO. Will it die? And if you guys have interest in this, please leave a comment down below. I would love to reply about your comments on this next story, guys. Talking about Richard Lewis, Decay, Slingshot Esports, and the death of that website. So again, very last in today's episode of CSGO News. The CSGO News is over. This is still CSGO related, though. If you guys remember a long time ago, we've actually had the start of Slingshot Esports, a very, very good journalistic website. Uh, one of their main reporters is actually Decay. Decay and I butted heads a long time ago. He was one of the pl players or one of the, the members of the community who actually called me out for the Mo instance. And so props to him. He's also a very, very good journalist, very good reporter. I know a lot of you guys who are actually very active on Twitter might disagree. Um, the, the member known as Don Hossie uh, usually leaks things very well and probably, you know, on equal timing with Decay. And uh, there's also Nell out there. A lot of good leakers out there, but Decay was definitely one of them. And so I briefly want to talk about Slingshot Esports. Actually, uh, Richard Lewis talked about this as well. Their website did actually go down or will be going out of business sometime soon, if not already, because they could not reach the monetary support they needed. And so I wanted to talk about, will CSGO journalism in the future be able to survive? Will people like Decay actually be able to find jobs? Can they actually earn a living doing this kind of thing? And my answer as of right now is certainly not. I know myself personally, I'm not a reporter, I'm not a journalist. I guess I'm kind of a reporter. You guys are very aware there are many sources out there that can actually have a text document laying out the news that I tell way earlier than I can actually put it out in video format. So my niche is video format. I, I can take from other sources and I put it in a video format. So if you guys like my personality, you generally like my news videos and that's my niche. Now on top of that, I don't think that Slingshot Esports had its own niche. It was doing the same thing as HLTV and HLTV doing a wide array of other things on top of the news. That's why it's going to remain to be the, the thing that it, that it actually is today. That's why it can remain to actually afford itself monetarily. It can place advertisements for all these gambling websites on their website, that is HLTV, and be able to afford production still. The problem with Slingshot Esports, my own personal problem with it, was yes, they had some great reporters. They leaked stories oftentimes ahead of HLTV, but the problem was a lot of diehard fans out there still don't need to know the news right away. There's not a big there's not a big necessity for us to know about these trades ahead of time, especially if you're off at school someday. If, if Decay or Slingshot Esports reports these things two to three hours ahead of time, by the time you get home from school and already check HLTV, you're seeing HLTVs first, and then you, then you see, oh, wait, Decay had it two to three hours before. There's not a big necessity for that as of right now, and I think on top of that, Slingshot Esports offered the same thing as HLTV, but they wanted to get paid for it, and that was the real big problem for me personally. Again, I think they're a great string of reporters out there. They actually had their own Patreon for this. They didn't get anywhere near close to their goal, and I, I really can't expect people to actually pay for this content anymore. We've actually learned so much over the past year or so on YouTube, other platforms. People are not going to pay for something they don't need to pay for. I mean, it's, it's quite simple. That's why ad block is the thing as of right now. People aren't gonna watch ads if they don't need to. Um, I, I think I started a Patreon a long time ago. No one wanted to support that because you realize you can either go here to watch a video format or you can go to HLTV and actually read the news yourself for free and it will always be free. And so 
to touch on this. I wish Decay the best of luck and all those reporters the best of luck in the future. Luckily, people like me, I found my niche. I, I can get paid a tiny bit of money on YouTube, enough to actually have it as a side job, and I'm blessed to have that. But even more importantly, we have people like Richard Lewis and Thorne who have found their niche of being a reporter. They are reporters. They both have their great, significant channels. They also have returned uh, the, by the numbers, a series they do. They have found their several niches. They have found the way to branch out their business to not rely on just writing documents or just writing articles online. Although if they want to, like Thorne, he certainly still can, but he realizes he can make a lot more money on YouTube. Of course, being an analyst or maybe even a commentator for some tournaments out there, they have found their niche. As of right now, if you guys are a reporter like Decay or other people out there trying to grow into the CSGO scene or the eSports scene in general, you have to find that main area where you progress and no one else can do what you do. Thorne and Richard Lewis have found a way to dominate that market and that's why I think they can still do what they do. Unfortunately, I, we, we definitely could have seen this coming for Slingshot Esports, other article, uh, other websites out there like maybe Flickshot as well in the future. We could see them going out of business sometime soon as well if they can't afford to pay their staff. HLTV now dominates that market. They're now trying to branch out to Twitter, other sources as well. I don't know. My overall thought about this, guys, is we all could have seen Slingshot Esports dying. What do you guys think about the future, though, for upcoming CSGO and Esports journalists? What do you guys think? What do they need to do to actually succeed? I know me, myself, personally, I'm lucky to have this video format for myself. I can never write an article like Decay does, but that was my overall thoughts about that. Sorry to keep it all lengthy for you guys. But yeah, Slingshot Esports is now dead, and no one, we've actually confirmed this, no one wants to pay for content that they don't have to pay for. And so that's why, again, I'm placing more ads on my videos. And so thank you guys all for watching, and that's why I have sponsors as well. Luckily, sponsors out there still pay me for this content. So I'm just, I'm lucky to have you guys watch the video. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you guys all tomorrow with one last video. We have a ton of great stories in tomorrow's episode, so please make sure to stop by and check it out. As always, live, love, laugh, a lot. My name is Jake Marai, like you. I will see you guys all tomorrow, and uh, goodbye.